Hey everybody, uh, so it is Monday, I'm in the middle of my Thanksgiving break, and uh, my hair is everywhere, and I'm really just enjoying sleeping and doing nothing with my life, but today my task is to sign up for the step one exam, and so I'm just gonna, oh my, like this is unacceptable, I'm going to bring you with me through this very momentous moment. I'm looking at the instructions and apparently step one is going to cost me six hundred and five dollars. Alrighty, I am at the NBME and I'm going to register. Okay, so I basically filled in my application and now I am, I guess, done with it. Oops, no I'm not. Now I have to pay six hundred and ten dollars. Yay! So med school exams like step one are no joke because apparently you know, you could hire someone to take the step one for you and that's a no-no in the world of medicine. So, you literally have to sign a piece of paper, such as this, send it to an address via the mail, like we're living in the 1980s, and you have to affix a picture of yourself. And the picture that I'm using, I just took right now, is this one because let's be honest it's probably a little bit more what I'm gonna look like the day I take step I'm watching sketchy videos trying to write down all the details and I have my uh, first aid book out did you know that only gram positive bacteria make spores because I didn't know that I was watching this strep pyogenes sketchy video and they said that it releases an exotoxin. Well, what's an exotoxin and what's an endotoxin? So I looked it up. And then it said that an endotoxin was part of LPS. Like, I don't really remember what that is. So then I went to the basic bacteriology section of my first aid because I have to do that because I forgot what freaking bacteria have on their outer uh, membrane. And then I find out that only gram-positive bacteria make spores. <laughs> It's just like, I find out something, but then I have a new question. I find out something, I have a new question. I find out something, I have a new question. Meanwhile, I just spent an hour finding out and reviewing all of this stuff. And I'm only five minutes into my first sketchy video. What are you doing? Doing sketchy videos? It is 7.42 in the morning. And trying to study for this quiz. Okay, so the quiz is over and I did pretty good. Um, we are just waiting for class to start. We got Facebook going on. We got my muffin that I completely bothered. And some water. And we're just patiently waiting for the presenter. I am wearing my white coat today and business class will close because we are going to the newborn nursery to shadow. It should be very exciting because I don't know if you know, but I used to volunteer at a newborn nursery and it was like the best time of my life. So I can't wait to shadow there again. Hopefully see if that might be an area that I would like to work at or, you know, I don't know. I'm just super excited. I love babies. <laughs> Okay, so it is almost Christmas time here at the hospital, and I always put up this beautiful Christmas tree. And I just like tomorrow look pretty. So here it is. So I am officially out. Here is my outfit of the day, wearing an express striped skirt. Um, I think this shirt is also from Express. My white coat, obviously, and some boots. So today we went to the newborn nursery and we basically did a physical exam on a baby that has only been alive for like two hours and it was crazy. Uh, first we checked his arteries, checked his fontanelles, checked his joints like in his, in his hips to check for congenital hip dysplasia and I saw what a circumcised penis looks like on a small baby and it's crazy. I was so shocked. I didn't know that's what it looked like. We learned a lot about breastfeeding, which is awesome and everyone should do it. And it was so awesome. I love babies. I love them. I love them so much. I'm going to go cancel my credit cards on a less happier note and try to fix that whole fiasco. Alrighty guys, it is five o'clock now and I am walking into my business class, which always has amazing food. We're talking about the ACA today. Even six months ago, I thought we would have been moving. The, the, the uh, direction of Okay, class is over. My makeup is slowly coming off as the day goes on. It is now seven o'clock 
and I've been at school since 6.30, so this is 12 hours and going, and I'm going to go to the acapella practice meeting that we have every week. All right, guys, so I have a very, very special unboxing on this almost December edition of my vlog. I have a giant box, and I really want to share this with you guys because this is something I've been wanting for a very long time. Uh, many of you may not know, but I have been using my camera uh, on my iPhone 6 to vlog, and I thought, you know, my subscribers really deserve more, and so I bought this really cool camera. Hopefully you guys like it, and hopefully that's what's in this bag. All right! Never ending. Rainbow of cardboard. All right. Then we have a smaller bag. Okay, let's enjoy the box. Get that box. <laughs> yes, just as I suspected he would. All right, now we're going to open the bag slowly with this very sharp exacto knife. Oh gosh. And we're opening it up. And, oh, we got a lot of stuff going on. So you might want to come a little closer. Secret camera person. All right, you guys, so a little close up. We have what appears to be a five piece camera cleaning kit, um, a multifunction card reader writer, no idea what that is, uh, a memory card wallet, I don't know. We have a 12 inch flexible tripod right there. We have a, oh, I got this all from Amazon. We got a camera holder. And we have this, oh, and we have a um, 32 gigabyte memory card. Kalex, you may be quiet. Oh my god, look at Kalex. He's going crazy. Kalex, do you have any words? He has no words. All right, back at me. All right. <laughs> All right, I would be in it too. All right, so now we're going to open the box. Back up. Uh, and inside the box, we have another small tripod right here comes with a lot of stuff we have a extra battery pack we have a extra 32 gigabyte memory card and we have the PowerShot G7X Mark II Canon camera and I'm so excited this is crazy we're opening the box Warranty, what stuff, what not. I have to look at that. Uh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Very cool. That's why it's like a vlogging camera. Um, it's very, very high tech. It feels like a brick. There's a lot of stuff, so hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy the quality of my videos a little more. The rest of this vlog will be shot on my iPhone 6, but my upcoming videos will all be um, under this guy's power. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I did this for you because I love you guys so much and uh, I just hope you all like it. Merry Christmas. Hello everybody, it is Tuesday now and I am outside on our patio area. It's a very beautiful day. And we have beautiful palm trees here, even though I am from Texas, not at all from the coast. I have lab today. I'm going to go look at patients with GI problems. And I'm just relaxing. This is a pen. This is a broken pen, don't worry. I am on my way to the GI lab. All of our clinical skills are in this giant building up ahead. I read the document and basically we're going to be talking to five different patients. We're going to spend about 10 minutes with each of them and they all have a different GI order disorder and we have to diagnose them, treat them, and I don't know, it's gonna be kinda cool. Alrighty guys, so I am in the bathroom right now with this awesome mirror that I wish I owned, but I don't. And basically we saw a bunch of patients who had different, um, well they all had cirrhosis basically, but they all had different reasons of having cirrhosis, like someone had hepatitis C, someone was, had a history of alcoholism, and another one had uh, autoimmune, uh, hepatitis, I believe. So that was really fun. That was really cool. And I got to learn a lot of things. 
So now I'm going to go home, hopefully stream some light troops, and then tonight we have the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, yay! So guys, awesome, awesome news. I just got a Facebook message saying that the there's a woman who found my wallet. And unfortunately, ugh, I guess what happened was I left it on my car, drove off, and it fell in the middle of the freeway right next to the Dairy Queen that I was at. And uh, it got run over because all of the cards in my wallet is compl are completely broken, she said. So she's mailing it to me. But I'm gonna go ahead and I guess replace all my credit cards and my ID anyway. That's good news. And I am drinking a Diet Coke, enjoying some lectures. Uh, Bay is taking a shower right now. He's literally been having to drive me everywhere because I don't have a driver's license at the moment. So kudos to him at the hospital. I'm in their little gift shop area, just kind of looking around. They have a lot of cute stuff. I have to uh, chat on my preceptor in about 40 minutes, and then I will be free for the rest of my day to hopefully go into the DMV and get my driver's license again. And it'll be my last day shadowing my ER preceptor. My last day in the ER for a while. And um, I'm just gonna really enjoy this because the ER is super fun. And you know, it's kinda like my last chance for interaction with a patient this year. Uh, and all of my second year, so yeah, it's kinda sad. Goodness, that was quite the experience. I basically had a patient, and I'm changing all the details, but uh, it was a male who had, who was complaining that they had lung cancer. And despite all of the labs and all the imaging that we took, we couldn't find any reason that they had lung cancer. And they also thought that they had um, schizophrenia, muscle pain, joint pain, arthritis, back pain. Just had everything in the book apparently so I didn't know what to do with that case that was very unusual uh, so now I'm just gonna go home I think that one thing that I'm kind of realizing is um, it can be really hard to form an emotional connection with a patient when you're interviewing them because when you're interviewing a patient you have to do many things at once you have to think okay so what what's their problem what do they have you have to remember all the things you have to record and take. You have to write it all down. At the same time, you also have to think possible diagnosis that they could have. At the same time, you have to speak to them and get all of the information and know what questions to ask. At the same time, you have to listen to everything that they're saying. And not only that, but you have to show empathy and compassion. And I feel like sometimes I get so busy writing everything down, thinking about what they could have, putting the pieces together, thinking about what information I need, what I don't have, that they could say something like, my mother died of cancer. And I'll write it down and I'll think, okay, that's, you know, uh, that increases the chances of having a, a hereditary mutation that could lead to cancer. And I'm thinking all of these things. And then I forget to just be a human being and think, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm really trying to remember to be a compassionate doctor, but that is something that I kind of struggle with because you do have to do so much in so little time. But uh, it would make the patient so much more comfortable if you remember to be a little bit more of a human being. So I just have to remember to do that. Woohoo! Finally have my driver's license. It means I can use my car, get around, do things with my life. I'm gonna go grocery shopping because let's go look at my pantry. Yep. That's not even my milk. And those aren't even my cheese sticks. And if we look in the pantry, this isn't even mine right here. Like, Catalyst has more food than I do. <laughs> Let's go shop with cash money. This is literally my emergency money. Um, since I don't have my credit card available, I have to use this. But even if I did have my credit card available, after I pay my rent this month and my rent next month, I will have literally $300 to my name to get through all the month of December <laughs> before my federal loans come in and kick into my account. So. Uh, it's gonna be a tight Christmas this year. You know, just in case you wanted to go into medicine for the money, let me just give you a reality check. You're gonna be broke for a very, very long time. I 
love the school supply section. It's just so colorful and I feel like anything I buy will just help me be a great student. And I usually pick up these pencils right here, but um, they're kind of expensive. And I lose them all so quickly, so I thought I'd probably get something more colorful. Ooh, never mind, these have stripes. One day I will afford you again beautiful pencils, mechanical pencils, but alas, wooden pencils for now. about 10.51 on my Wednesday night, doing what I typically do, not doing any homework and instead watching YouTube videos about random story times, chilling with the cat, had a food coma, nothing new. I think I'm going to start looking at some slides so I don't feel like a complete waste of life, uh, and then I'm going to go to sleep because I'm so tired of just sitting around and doing nothing. It is 12.41 now, and I actually did all my lectures. This is really surprising. Last time I will be wearing scrubs for a very long time. All right, everybody, so today is Thursday and I'm just taking it super easy today. Um, me and Calyx have just been napping all day. I went to class, took a quiz at eight in the morning. Then I left school at 10.30 when all my classes ended. Uh, I went to sleep and then the rest of my day, I think I'm gonna watch a few YouTube videos. I have only two lectures and my research to work on today, so overall a pretty easy day. And then tonight I'm going to the movies to see Coco. So yes, in case you're ever wondering, do med students ever have free time and do anything fun? Yes, we do, and we get it, we get a few days to take it easy every week. Alrighty, before I start my online lectures, I made a smoothie. It's basically one banana, like four strawberries, a cup of soy milk, and ice. This is a good way to get your fruit servings in every day. And it's super, super delicious. Yay! <sighs> Currently getting ready for school. I have one class that I'm going to because I overslept for the other three. And then I have shadowing um, at one. Uh, and I'm shadowing, well, I'll, I'll surprise you. So today I missed the attendance for the first class. Got it for the second class. Shut up to class. Uh, maybe 10 seconds late and missed the attendance for the third class, even though I showed up and went to it. Then I got an email saying that my step one form to become registered for step one was rejected. And I have to go back and take another passport styled photo. And you know, it's, it's best to sign up for step early so that you can get the date that you want. So this is all just a lot for me. Not only that, but uh, Apparently now I have to go do a whole bunch of things for my org and all right now I'm shadowing and just a lot to do today and I haven't eaten anything and I'm just so tired. I'm looking at my score on my last patient encounter and I got an 85, which is kind of unusual because I always score pretty highly. Um, basically, they said that I didn't summarize and that I said um and uh a lot. Okay, sent a few emails and I am ready to leave the study area and ready to go home and eat something. Okay, guys, so um, I am getting ready to go. Uh, but before I, I leave, I wanted to get a lot of my thoughts out there because maybe if someone else has these thoughts and maybe they won't feel so alone. I've been shadowing um, a lot of different doctors and I don't know what I where I'm supposed to be. I, I like some shadowing more than others, but those always seem to be the, the positions that require a 4.0 GPA and 10 research projects and 
I just feel like I'm not there. I'm not at that type of student. I don't know where I belong. I don't know what residency I belong to. You know, I always thought that if I got into medical school, it was over. Like my life was set. I knew where I was going. Uh, this is where everyone wants to be. As soon as you're here, the rest of life is easy. There's so many different types of doctors. Being a psychiatrist is nothing like being a surgeon and being a pediatrician is so much different than being a palliative care. You know, so you can't just say any of them are good. You really do have to pick the one that's right for you. And if you pick the wrong one, then that's kind of your job for life. I'm just feeling so stressed because so many of my classmates, they've been knowing what they wanted to do since like they started medical school or since college. You know, I knew I was good at science when I was in first grade. I knew I liked anatomy when I was in high school. And I knew I could get to medical school when I was in college. And I always knew medical school was where I was supposed to be, but I haven't planned anything after this. And I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know where I'm, I don't know what my future is. I don't know where I belong. I don't know if I'll end up just settling and not doing what I always wanted to do. And is, am I one of those people who's not fortunate enough to realize their dreams or I don't know. I'm trying to pick the job that I should have or the residency that I should go into based on what I know. I love surgery. I love working with my hands. I love how your brain just loses track of time. I've shadowed um, a plastic surgeon. I just, I absolutely loved it. It was awesome. I didn't get tired of watching. I loved looking at the anatomy and seeing my knowledge actually in action. I loved surgery and that's big because that kind of eliminates a lot of other residencies. Patient interaction and longevity of care is not really as important to me as other people. I love talking to patients, but I just feel like that's not my strong point. <laughs> I feel like I'm a bit awkward and I don't really know what to say. I'm just, it doesn't come as naturally to me as it does other people. And so I would be okay if I went into a residency that didn't have that longevity of care that other students might find very important. I don't like being bullied and I can't deal with too much stress. Now you're probably thinking, America, you're in medical school. You deal with tons of stress, so you're fine. And actually one of the reasons I was scared to go into medical school is because I thought I couldn't handle the stress and here I am and it's fine. But there are some residencies that are kind of ruthless like general surgery there's a, a tight hierarchy there and you will be at the bottom of the barrel and be treated like the bottom of the barrel i've heard in that residency so that's why i'm kind of like i like surgery but i don't want to be treated like worthless nothing for five years of my life that's really all i know right now i really like all the modules i've had so far all of them are wonderful uh, I'm so thankful that I get rotations during third year to really see and experience all the different residencies that there are because I really need that. I really need to know what I'm doing, where I'm going in life. Thank you guys again for watching another vlog. I'm just going to eat, have a food coma, uh, watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos, do some lectures, clean my dishes, and relax for the rest of the day because I've been at it all day long. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Again, I don't, not exactly sure what everybody finds in my videos. Is it entertainment? Is it advice? Is it knowledge? I'm not sure. You can leave it in the comments below to let me know what it is you gain from my videos. It would really help me understand, you know, why anybody watches me, really. But anyway, thank you guys so much for all the support and love. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in my next video as usual. Bye, everyone.